Registered Phenomena Code 063 Object Class Beta Orange Gamma Orange Hazard Types Contact Auditory Ideological Mind Regression Visual Incorporeal Additional Properties Sapient Transmutation Extra-dimensional Containment Protocols RPC-063 is to be secured in a Class III containment unit with an interlocking system. Material specifications are to be featured with ruthenium material combined with aluminum foil to counter any ruptures caused by its extra-dimensional properties. Photographs and digital footages are not to be taken under any circumstances. Any forms of media that resemble RPC-063 are to be confiscated and destroyed immediately. The only photographic image of RPC-063 is to be kept within a sealed folder, accessible only by personnel above Level 3. Due to its passive behavior and personality, RPC-063 is to be interviewed on a bi-weekly basis to maintain a social and psychological connection. Personnel requesting to administer interviews must be pre-approved in advance by a Level 4 staff from the Anthropology Department. However, it is to be noted that any request may be rejected for any reason by lead researcher Dr. Harry Victor. During these interview sessions, personnel with religious affiliations, specifically Catholicism, are to be barred from conducting interviews, including in the proximity of RPC-063 containment unit. Any unusual behavior is to be reported to Dr. Victor or a staff member from the Anthropology Department. If behavior has been determined to be life-threatening, Protocol Amber Red is to be enacted, unless specified otherwise by Site Management. Protocol Update Due to an incident on June 1998, Containment Protocol has been updated. See the attachment below for further details. Protocol Amber Red is a contingency procedure to counter an event manifested by RPC-063, designated as Black Ball. In the event that structural integrity of its containment cell has been compromised, or ACS levels within the interior are lower than ACS-3, Protocol Amber Red is to be enacted. 1. Site emergency procedures are to be initiated. Essential items and personnel, such as the Site Director, are to be evacuated from site. 2. An Authority Quick Reaction Force element is to be deployed to suppress and contain Black Ball. 2.1. Should containment be considered a failure, self-destruct systems may be authorized to counter a Black Ball event. Section was retracted by order of the Office of Ethics and Review, following the event on June 13, 2019. Authority QRF elements are to be provided with an ACS field stabilizer. Stabilizer is to be activated when in close proximity of RPC-063. RPC-063 is a Class IV extra-dimensional humanoid entity that appeared to initially manifest during the Protestant Reformation. Measuring approximately 1.43 meters in height, the subject does not display any form of imitation of clothing or physical structure, which can be attributed to its darkened epidermis. Due to its unusual skin nature, the subject becomes almost indistinct from its facial and physical form, only apparent by its darkened epidermis and body outline. The only identifiable features are the subject's distinct radiance of its white pupils and translucent hands and arms, specifically the ulna and radius. Whether the luminosity is caused by external light exposure is currently unknown. Strangely, light does not appear to be absorbed or deflected when any illumination is directed at RPC-063 skin pigmentation. This results in light passing through its entire anatomy, with light appearing visible through its skin. RPC-063-1 instances are individuals that were affected by RPC-063. When RPC-063-1 is within the presence of RPC-063, 
RPC-063 will manifest and influence RPC-063-1 to enter Stage 5 REM sleep. Rapid Eye Movement REM, is a phase of sleep within mammals and birds. Stage 5 refers to the dreaming stage of sleep. Other physical symptoms include displaying high blood pressure along with a regular acceleration of heartbeats. Blood and oxygen flow rapidly decreases, causing paleness to the skin. Physical twitching visible around the neck and muscles. RPC-063-1 will be unaware that they've entered a state of deep sleep and visualize random dreams manifested by their own cerebrum. However, these illusions will begin to shift into RPC-063-1's phobia, displayed by RPC-063, who will materialize at random intervals to RPC-063-1 in various appearances but often in their natural form. RPC-063-1's phobias will develop to a critical point where they will experience circulatory shock, followed by an immediate cardiac arrest. Within hours, RPC-063-1's body will cease to exist and be substituted by an umbra outline of their body. Photographic samples were taken on February 1999 of RPC-063's appearance. However, Unknowingly, the photographs were cognitohazardous after four out of the five photographists were found unconscious on the floor after suffering a brain hemorrhage. As of January 3, 19, no deaths have since been recorded when directly viewing at RPC-063. Further testing conducting on viewing RPC-063's appearance through photographic images have resulted in death. However. A photo of RPC-063 was successfully captured on film and developed using RPC-268. This developed film was considered non-hazardous, though additional copies using RPC-268 were discovered to be cognitohazardous. See Addendum 063.04 Following a series of tests, various devices revealed different results, each manifesting different effects. It's unclear if this particular photograph was somehow unaffected by RPC-063 or RPC-268's anomalous effects, but results are currently inconclusive. See Addendum 063.04 It was under the assumption that RPC-063 was incapable of articulating, as evident by RPC-063 illustrating indecipherable messages on the observation glass. On August, it was revealed that RPC-063 was capable of speech. See Addendum 063.03 Description Update Additional information has been added. See Addendum 063.02 Addendum 063.01 Discovery, January 3, 19 on January 3, 19, head research staff, Dr. Gabriel, was discovered floating above the ceiling of Site-014's office wing. The initial cause of death was inconclusive of medical experts. Security footage captured an unidentified figure, designated RPC-063, glancing at the camera before the footage abruptly corrupted. Note, initial personnel who came into contact with the footage were exposed to its cognitohazardous effects and died an hour after inspecting the footage. The footage was briefly confiscated as a result. Further investigation uncovered that the attendees at the Cathedral Church, located at Massachusetts, reportedly disappeared on separate occasions by local authorities. Mobile Specialized Team X-Ray-6 annulifiers, were deployed to search the premises. However. X-Ray-6 reportedly encountered Vatican operatives during their investigations. With the suspicion that the Holy See was involved, the Authority contacted the Church for information concerning RPC-063. Communication between the Authority and Holy See lasted for two days, until the Holy See agreed to distribute reports dating back to the Protestant Reformation. See Addendum 063.06 Following several days of search, RPC-063 was tracked down at an abandoned cemetery, 
located not far from the cathedral. A containment team was deployed, and managed to contain RPC-063 with no incident. However, upon the team's arrival, the Anderson Coherency Scale ACS, was reported to be irregular by the team. For more information, see the attachment below. Retrieval Log 063.01 Audio Transcript Date August 1st Forward The Retrieval Team, codenamed Ares, arrived with two other containment teams, Athena and Artemis. Upon arrival, all three groups witnessed unidentified floating humanoids across the cemetery. Though no hostilities were presented, and the mission continued. Note, footage of the retrieval operation was expunged, due to cognito hazard reasons. Ares 0-1 Radio Ares 0-1 to Athena and Artemis teams. Position your men around the margin, and keep an eye on those floating humanoids. My guides will handle the bagging. Over. Athena 1-1 Copy Artemis 0-1 Roger Ares 0-1 Ares 0-4 We clear to proceed, TL? Ares 0-1 Affirmative. 0-6 Take point. Ares' team enters the cemetery gate, advances through the courtyard, as Athena and Artemis teams maintain the cemetery's outer perimeter. Ares' team stacks against the church's entrance. Ares 0-3's AECR equipment produces beeps. My readings are going off. What's it reading? ACS levels are shifting numbers. Wait, it's going at… Shit! I think my AECR is malfunctioning. Did you break the damn thing on the way here? No, I didn't. It was perfectly working when we got here. Command, this is Ares 0-1. Ares 0-3's AECR equipment is detecting a shift in ACS levels. We cannot determine the exact ACS at this time. Please advise. Is Ares 0-3's AECR malfunctioning? Over. Cannot be determined. Over. Copy that, Ares 0-1. Proceed with the retrieval, unless the area becomes compromised for you and your team to handle. Understood, Command. Ares 0-1 out. Looks at Ares' team. Alright, let's do this. Ares' team continues to stack up on the entrance. Ares 0-3 and 0-5 reach for the door handle and forcefully open it wide. Ares' team proceeds to clear the church. Ares' team reports the interior to be empty, and large, with the geometry appearing to be non-Euclidean. Am I losing it? Or the inside looks a lot larger than the church? Yeah, no. I get what you mean. 0-3. Status on the AECR? Wait one. Ares 0-3 examines the ACS levels. Still inconclusive. Fuck. It's by the minus range now. Ares 0-6 notices something from the far side of the church, nearby the altar. Ares' team makes visual contact with RPC-063, who appears to be at a non-aggressive stage. They proceed to advance through the extended interior. Command. We made contact with the target, proceeding with containment. Movement above! Ares' team directs their weapons above the ceiling, as they notice numerous unidentified figures floating above them. They're floating! What the fuck? Command. We spotted numerous bodies floating by the ceiling. Bodies appear to be not active, continuing to approach the target. I hate churches. Always remind me of those horror movies. Well, yeah. We're always in horror movies, but with guns. Shut it, you two. 05 and 06. Proceed with the bagging. Ares 03 and 06 proceed with containing RPC-063. Ares 0-3 AECR once more bleached rapidly, at 05 and 06 near RPC-063. Ares 0-3 holds out AECR. I swear to God this is broken. 0-3 Status? Ares 0-3 repeatedly slaps the AECR as the numbers shift continuously. By the third slap, the AECR reads the ACS levels to be at 4. Huh. I guess that worked. We're all clear, apparently? You positive, 0-3? Definitely. Just needed a few bumps and it's reading the environment normally. ACS is at 4. We're clear. <sighs> right.
Continue with the procedure. ARI 0-1 continues to instruct 0-5 and 0-6 that contain RPC-063. Analog Statement Someone needs to check and inspect the AECR equipment. I get they are an expensive piece of hardware, but Jesus, can someone get them checked out before I die in the future? Aside from equipment irregularities, containment proceeded with no incident. The anomaly was contained, and the cleanup crew had a hard time getting those floating bodies from the ceiling. The area has been locked down by the local authorities. Specialist Daniel Armada, Area 0 3. Addendum 063.02 Blackball Event Note, This appendix covers the manifested effects that took place on June 1998. For information pertaining to the incident, see Addendum 063.05. Due to indeterminable factors that cannot be accurately described or identified, a black ball manifestation cannot be predicted at this time. Black ball refers to an inexplicable phenomenon manifested by RPC-063. The causes and reasons for the phenomena remain widely debated. Dr. Maria Mason from the Astronomy Department hypothesized that the event may be correlated to the Earth's orbital inclination and a solar eclipse. Before the incident on June 1998, solar eclipses continuously occurred four days in a row. The causation of these eclipses were unexplainable at the time, but during these occurrences, the behavior of RPC-063 was reported to have been irregular by security personnel. The following is a theorized outline event of a black ball manifestation based on information and on-site instruments recordings during the time of the incident. A study concerning the black ball manifestation, written by the Department of Physics. Upon the occurrence of a solar eclipse, the Anderson Coherency Scale ACS, levels will begin to sharply shift from varying degrees of levels, numbers of which would surpass below 1 and above 5. It's to be noted that ACS measurements may be deeply inconsistent and or unreliable. RPC-063 will, if possible, attempt to seek out an enclosed area where it will manifest and reconstruct the occupying space's geometry to a non-Euclidean state. Once the occupying space becomes non-Euclidean, an unknown wave of energy is released and projected within a 200-meter radius, causing any person within the proximity to succumb into a deep state of sleep. While under this deep state of sleep, persons will begin to gravitate as an unknown phenomena of black haze develops around their ankle joint, attached to the ground. It's speculated that this phenomenon prevents those affected from drifting away from their current position. Due to the intense fluctuations in the area's geometry and shift in non-Euclidean form, the affected area will start to experience a fracture in our reality, causing numerous distortions and decay in the area. It's theorized that when this occurs, our reality may be exposed and open as a bridgeway to other realities, temporarily. Samples taken from the incident were examined by the Nuclear Physics Department. They've concluded to not be nuclear material or emit any hazardous radiation. However, large quantities of unidentified particles were detected, but not precisely enough to cause irreparable personal harm. While the particles were mostly present in various samples, it is most likely that they may have originated due to the manifestation. Addendum 063.03 .03. Interview August 24 Following his initial discovery, several interviews were administered by researcher Fraser. Attempts to extract information, such as its history and other relevant knowledge, were initially unsuccessful. Previous sessions have demonstrated RPC-063 to be uncooperative, often leaving indecipherable statements on the observation glass. However, on August 24, RPC-063 was observed to verbally communicate with Researcher Fraser. The following is an interview between Researcher Fraser and RPC-063. Interview Log 063.01 Audio Transcript Interviewer Researcher Amelia Fraser Interviewee RPC-063 Note: The interview has been in session for 16 minutes. 
RPC-063 has been known to continuously glance and glare at Researcher Fraser for nearly the session's entirety. Researcher Fraser checks your watch. Almost sixteen minutes to the clock. You haven't said anything to me for the past week. <laughs> Guess the guys over at Containment are right about wasting my time with you. RPC-063 tilts its head at Researcher Fraser. <sighs> well, I'm going to end this now. RPC-063 Human? Researcher Fraser is startled, dropping her clipboard on the ground. Hu human I mean, yes, I am human, RPC-063. You can talk? 063 is not my name. RPC-063 063 is not my name, but must everybody call me the same? Researcher Fraser picks up the clipboard from the ground and picks up a pen. Well, it's your registered number. We give every anomaly we find a number. Your number is 063 to us. A vast number to name me. But what is so absorbing of me? Absorbing? You speak rhythmically? RPC-063 nods forwardly. Yes. It is how I utter my tongue to you and among. Interesting. <clears throat> well, they're not quite normal around here. Society has changed significantly since the Dark Ages. The darkness is always dancing around us, for they consume the light and fear me as the body of night. Body of Night? Are you some sort of supernatural deity? Or a god, even? It is not my place to affirm your conclusions, for they may all be an illusion. Researcher Fraser moves the recorder closer to the observation glass. Why are you talking to me now? What made you hesitate? I held no faith in your trust when I was summoned before. That is, until I sensed honesty and ever for rapport. Do you not trust the authority? Interview room lights suddenly flicker rapidly, the observation glass visibly shaking as unidentified whispers became apparent and intensified. RPC-063 is visibly shaken. Octoritas? No, no, there's no Octoritas here. We're friends. Room lights gradually stopped flickering as the whispers reverberated and disappeared. Okay. Let's avoid that question. Okay, let's avoid that question. Researcher Fraser reorganizes the table and flips to the clipboard. Where did you come from, 063? I was deceived long ago by my primordial heir, where I was sent to a world to face affliction and tear. That is, till I saw an estranged hand reaching out to me, comforting and heaving me from the despairing realm. A beacon of reasoning, he proclaimed that was against the church's lust, and so mustered me to fight, or I become dust. Who was this person you're referring to? A Protestant man that shook the Pope, aiding a reformation against the church's strings of rope. Strings of rope. Strings of rope. You were summoned by someone from the Protestant Reformation? Yes, I've been feared and turned his ethos to be revered. Why were you summoned during that time period, and what did he do with you? RPC-063 does not respond. The room's light repeatedly flickers once more. 063, can you please answer my question? I wish to not speak further, for I must be an observer. I'm sorry, but what did you mean by that? RPC-063 becomes non-responsive after a minute, and Researcher Fraser terminates the interview shortly after. End log. Interviewer's statement. It's progress, I'd say. We haven't had any information from RPC-063 since it was contained. And here I nearly lost my faith in these sessions until today. I wasn't expecting 063 to speak rhythmically at first. On a side note, it seems RPC-063 has had a history with our predecessor, the Actoritas. While I believe we can directly ask questions about its history, I highly recommend not to ask anything related to the Octoritus, since I'm worried about what would happen. Researcher Fraser Addendum 063.04 Photography Tests Photographic Testing Log 063.04 Device Notes Video Camera 
Video will appear to be glitchy or grainy when directed at RPC-063. Prolonged observation with the item will result in the feed to shift into a black screen. Only visible parts of the anomaly's luminescent anatomy and eyes will be visible until approximately one minute. The subject will experience the physical symptoms and effects. Digital Camera The camera will stop functioning when a single or multiple shots are captured. Images saved will be deleted through unknown means, and the only set of images available are RPC-063. When viewing these photos, subjects will experience a sense of loss in reality, similar to derealization disorder. Thermographic Camera Temperature signatures will vary for different thermal cameras, though most often, RPC-063 will not appear as heat nor cold signature. Interestingly, subjects viewing through this device will not be affected by RPC-063's anomalous effects. Polaroid Camera Results are often inconclusive. The film successfully develops, but the image consists of a blurry resolution, with the subject visibly included. More Polaroids will develop without the subject's input, including photos of the subject and scenes that they are averse to or have a fear of. When a total of six Polaroids are developed, the subject will experience a hallucination of their phobias in real time until they become incapacitated or commit suicide. RPC-268 Utilization of RPC-268 was authorized for testing by the Anomaly Experimentation Team. Following its initial use, a film was successfully developed and exhibited no hazardous effects on the viewer. However, following repeated tests, and the production of new Polaroids of RPC-063. Any additions appear to cause hazardous effects. The only produced Polaroid that isn't non-hazardous has been stored for archival purposes. Addendum 063.05 Incident, June 1998 On June 1998, Site-020's internal systems detected ACS levels shifting between an hour after this irregularity was detected, Site-020's distress beacon was activated, and all communication activity ceased. Nearby facilities dispatched a quick reaction force to investigate Site-020, composed of Authority Security Forces and Mobile Specialized Team Echo-8 Plague Doctors. The following is a video transcript of an exploration team investigating Site-020, seven hours after the distress beacon was activated. Exploration Log 063.01 Audio Transcript Date June 1998 Forward, Echo-8 is inserted through the elevator entrance, descending down to the containment zone. The team consists of five members, designated from Echo-8-1 to 8-5. Begin Log Radio Check, Team All members radio check their communications as the elevator slowly descends to its floor. Echo Team, this is Command. Echo 8-1 radios Command. Send traffic. Echo Team, proceed as planned. Remember, the priority is to investigate what happened. Survivors are a secondary objective. Over. Copy that, Command. Proceeding with the mission. The elevator stops. The door is slowly open, and reveal the hallways in front are flashing red strobes. Echo Team proceeds to exit from the elevator, clearing the corridors as they advanced. Corridor is clear, sir. Where the fuck is everyone? I don't know, but it seems the entire facility was placed into a lockdown. If that's the case, how come the elevators weren't sealed off? Echo 8-3 shrugs. Don't look at me. I'm just as clueless as you are. Let's keep moving. Echo Team continues to sweep the corridors check in the rooms as they pass by. Echo 8-2 and 8-5 advances to the security room, checking the interior. Echo 8-2 radios Echo 8-1. Echo 8-1, this is 8-2. I need you by the security room that we just passed. Stand by. On my way. Echo 8-1 walks into the security room. The first thing he sees is two security guards floating by the ceiling, their ankles chained onto the floor by a translucent chain, designated RPC-063-1. This isn't good, is it? No, it isn't. Radios Command. 
Command, this is Echo 81. We've encountered what appears to be two security guards floating by the ceiling, ankles chained to the floor by a translucent chain. Possible anomalous manifestation occur at this time. Please advise. Echo 81, be advised. Anomaly manifestation may have originated over by RPC 063's containment cell. Proceed to that containment area and investigate it. Affirmative, Command. Echo Team proceed to RPC 063's containment. Echo 81 glances over at 82 and 85. Come on, you heard Command. Let's move. Echo Team begins to proceed through RPC 063's containment cell. Echo 83 encounters several more RPC 063 1 instances floating above the area. Place looks bigger than we thought. Non Euclidean geometry is my best guess. How close are we to RPC 063's position, 84? Echo 84 takes out a map and transponder that's connected to the facility's mainframe. It's a bit iffy, but it's apparently nearby, just about over there. Echo 84 points towards the direction of the right side. The area that Echo 84 points to appears to be blocked by an unknown large object, creating an unusual oval sphere around its root. Is this safe to even go near it? My guess? I doubt it. Find us another path. I don't care how long it takes. Echo 84 continues to view the map, looking for possible reroutes to RPC 063's containment. How about here? It may take us a while since the interiors change in non Euclidean geometry. Doesn't matter. We gotta get this done. A2, take the lead. We're right behind you. Echo Team reroutes its path to RPC 063's containment, passing through a gate that appears closed halfway, allowing the team to slip through easily. Two to four minutes passed, the interior's geometry appearing more distorted as they reached RPC 063's containment entrance. Echo 81 Radio's Command. Command, this is 81. We've reached by RPC 063's containment cell. Proceeding to containment the anomaly, how copy? No response. Radio signals are probably weak over here because of low levels ACS and shit. Let's get this over with. Echo Team enters the containment cell. Echo 81 to 85 secure the insides, noticing a large dark sphere encompassing the center of the room with tangent lines connected around the chamber. Echo 82 and 85 pushes towards the other side of the room. Be careful, we don't want to set it off. 85 and 4 set up the ACS stabilizer. Echo 85 and 4 proceed to move towards the room corners, setting up the stabilizer equipment as the rest of Echo Team maintain line of sight on RPC-063. Sir, ACS is shifting again. Fuck that. It's not reading it accurately anyway. Echo Team's radio hisses emit a loud ringing over their communications. Echo A2 covers the right ear, while the rest of the team attempt to switch off the radios. Echo A3 is visibly shaking uncontrollably, and gradually begins to drift from the floor. Fuck, A3 is down. Someone get… The rest of the audio begins to become static, and the noise background becomes louder. Members of Echo Team can be heard in the background, though not enough to be decipherable for the transcript. The audio becomes more audible as the audio ends after an explosion is heard. End log. After Action Report Members of Echo A Team came out of the elevator alive, though there was no sign of Echo A3 with them when they came up. The incident was contained though it was unclear what occurred inside after an explosion was reported within the facility. Echo 81 stated that he can't remember what happened as soon as they descended down. As far as he could tell, it's as if he never came down there. Due to concerns of hazardous effects from the footage, all copies have been confiscated, and an audio transcript verbatim will only be available. Redacted Addendum 063.06 Confidential Vatican Documents Following the encounter of Vatican agents on January 3, 19, the Holy See sent out several copies of records, at the request of the Authority, of initial sightings of RPC-063 in the early mid-16th century. Agents from the Psychological Initiative Occult PIO, began monitoring on March 23, 15. Prior to observation began, the PIO was investigating alleged atrocities committed within local villages, including those within Catholic churches 
following sightings of a dark mass witch. In these investigations, an unnamed Lutheran extremist was observed during these events. According to the notes written, they supposedly possessed the witch under their palm. The following is a series of letters obtained from the Lutheran extremist, dated around the 16th century. Martin Luther was an honorable gentleman with great merit who spoke to my ears on our God and Church's values, and I became in tune. While his tongue spoke ill of the Church, he opened my eyes for what he said so ill of them. Sinned against God, he said in a hatred matter. The Church has sinned so much under the banner of God's work, yet it seems such a fallacy of greed and power. He placed his hand with such gentle care on my shoulder, inviting me to spread the word of the proper practice of God, not thrust a dagger at the backs of a martyr. Protestantism shall be my beliefs for God, our God, and I shall spread the word for a reformation of the Church. Archived Letter I have followed every step that Luther has taken on this journey. His words are what everyone must hear. Be soothed by it. We have amassed many followers for sweeping changes to the Church. Father Henry sent out an invitation for a calling, a concern he raised when he stepped into my home. As a Catholic priest, he shares his hatred for what I have become, but forgave me as a former student. He left small crumbs of whisper that he opposed the Church, but could not say the words. He appeared strange to me that day, sharing an inkling tale of his that the church he stands possessed a dark evil, an evil that would send demons in hell to our world. He shook his head, unable to say any words. Before he stepped out, he wanted me to give him a word of honor, to take the evil within his church so that he could live in peace. I was unsure, suspicious even, but I nodded, and he rushed away from my home. I worry for him and his old body, pray even for God to spare him into the kingdoms of heaven. Archived Letter Father Henry came one night, holding an old jar with him. He didn't utter his tongue to me, not even sharing an eye with me. He whisked away for the night after leaving the jar on the table. A sudden convulsion lifted under my skin. My stomach was emitting a strange feeling. It's as if a force was pulling towards the jar, opening it even. I lost my body's weight, and I opened the jar without hesitation, a strength I shed as much that blood the tips of my fingers. A sudden force pushed me from afar, my shoulders scratching against the wooden cover. I could not lift the finger why, but it is as if I summoned a great evil within my own home, and there I saw a demonic creature standing where the jar sat. I could not understand the words that came from its tongue, but a connection combusted and I suddenly knew what it said. It was a spirit, so I thought. I was so uncertain of myself at the time. It looked at me with convulsion, in an unknown dialect. It spitted out the Latin words for darkness and night. I feared it. It proclaimed the deity in a soothed voice. It looked like a woman in black, a deity of darkness. It confronted me, seeking guidance, a mentor. Father Henry had wanted me to teach and follow his footpath, but I urged myself to not, for I would be carrying the devil's work. Maybe not. Perhaps it is a right to teach the passage to Protestantism. God will forgive me for making a bid with the devil, but it is for the sake of ridding the evil corruptness of the Church. I'm sorry, Father Henry. It is what I must do to be a Protestant. Archived Letter Sleep is what I yearn. The dead howl for me at night. I have been thrown into the pits of hell by Luther himself. He dared not to reason my actions, for he heard a whisper of atrocity in my name. This is not the way of Protestantism. This is the devil's work. He screamed at me that day. His words shook me, but I understood the fate it would cost me when I cast spirits to do God's work. I cannot stop. It is God's will. The will of… Section Indecipherable. I have taught it as if it were my own. I did what was right. I think I did wrong. I have to stop. I am losing grip of my own body. My energy and aura are dwindling. I grew blind for what Father Henry wanted me to do with the spirit. Destroy it? Rid of the church for all at once. The spirit brushed my palm. It gazed at my eyes and recounted me a story of his life. 
It once was parallel with the Erebus, a union it equated. Darkness is what it enchants for. I am uncertain. I am sensing a great evil within me. Perhaps I am the evil of all, not the Church. I must tender the spirit to rid of me for what I am. Maybe then God will understand. Archived Letter By 15, at the orders of Pope Innocent X, the Psychological Initiative Occult was to suppress public information and media information relevant to RPC-063. The last official document to observe RPC-063 was written on November 4, 15XX.